Hello world, in today's video we will be going over a few updates regarding the DreamWorks Moonray rendering engine and its integration with Blender. First, we'll be going over the latest developer post in the Blender developer forums. Next, we'll be talking about the Moonray forum, which just recently opened up on the Open Moonray GitHub. And lastly, we'll be taking a look at the Hydra USD add-on, which is currently the main pipeline of how they plan on getting Moonray into Blender. I have the Hydra add-on running on Blender 3.4.1, and this example scene we're looking at is the Pixar Kitchen USD loaded inside of Blender. And we'll talk a little bit about this at the end of the video. Starting with the developer post. Yesterday, we got our first official post on the developer forum from an actual Blender and Cycles developer. Brech Van Lummel shouts out to you, and I'm sorry for the mispronunciation, of course. To summarize, they discuss a few different things here. Uh, this first main paragraph is talking about the Hydra USD add-on that I mentioned, and how this will be the main path line going forward for getting the renderer to work inside of Blender. Next, they talk about how Moonray uses GPU acceleration for ray intersection, but almost everything else runs on the CPU. And they talk about how this is not what most Blender works workers are used to. This next section talks about how they hope to rewrite Moonray during the port to use more of the GPU instead of focusing so heavily on the CPU. And it talks about how currently at Pixar, they actually use network rendering to connect multiple CPUs. And obviously, most Blender users are used to a single GPU as opposed to multiple CPU rendering systems. One of the things I found interesting in this blog post was the fact that Moonray only has Ray intersection offloading for NVIDIA cards, considering the Hydra plugin is an AMD plugin that just happens to also work with NVIDIA. But this opens up an opportunity for vendors to come help Moonray, and this could hopefully mean that vendors like AMD, Intel, and Apple get more involved and interactive with both Moonray and Cycles. And then lastly, I think the biggest takeaway from this blog post is the fact that Cycles is also Apache licensed, meaning that they can exchange code between Cycles and Moonray, and hopefully this will be able to lead to them collaborating indirectly or directly. Before we discuss this Moonray forum, I asked the Moonray developers if it was okay for me to share this with the public, and they just asked that I inform my viewers that I do not represent DreamWorks Animations or its parent or affiliated companies. That being said, Moonray has gone out of the way to create this awesome forum here where we can ask questions, discuss problems that we're running into, share ideas, showcase work we've done, and just engage with the community in general. If you have a GitHub account, I'll just have the link posted below and you can come interact with the community. They seem to be super active, responding to everybody and discussing different ways to implement Moonray, as well as helping people troubleshoot and get their builds around. If you plan on being active in the Moonray community, feel free to go head over to the forums and show some love and say hello. One quick thing I wanted to mention before the Hydra USD add-on. I found it really cool that in the Moonray sizzle reel, there was a few different blend swap files that they used to showcase the rendering. And you can see those three blend files here. That's just something I found really cool that I wanted to mention before heading into this next section. Lastly, I want to talk about the USD Hydra add-on. I'll have the link below to the GitHub where you can download and install this plugin. And it's as simple as any other plugin that you're used to in Blender. Here's an example of the Pixar Kitchen set, which you can download from their website, running inside of the Hydra USD add-on. The rendering engine here is the Radeon Pro Renderer. It's not the Moonray rendering engine, obviously, as it's not supported inside of Blender yet. And the reason this plugin is going to be so vital is because it allows us to work with USD files, which is what DreamWorks and Pixar and a lot of other companies work with, and what a lot of programs are able to work with as well. And having a universal system that lets Blender integrate with other 3D softwares is just super amazing. I'm super excited to see Moonray and other rendering engines get implemented into Blender. One last thing I wanted to mention about the Hydra USD that I find super cool is it allows you to take any USD file and then add in Blender data into that file and combine them, essentially taking any object or scene from Blender and adding it into the USD scene. The only problem, as you see here, is that the USD materials weren't registered with the system, so my materials are coming up as invisible. And there's a lot to go with that, but that's not what this video is about. Hopefully this process will be seamless and smooth in the future. Overall, I'm super excited for the implementation of Moonray into Blender, both because it's a new and exciting rendering engine that I've seen my whole childhood, but also because it's pushing forward the future of USD and USD integration being a part of Blender. And that's super excited to see. If you want more updates like this, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll try to keep you guys as updated as I can. So much love and peace.